I am Stacey Zim Roberts, and I am the host of Live Your Passion, and I have the distinct pleasure to introduce to you my favorite singer on the entire planet, Antia Duvapat. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. She just finished an amazing show in Seattle, and you were kind enough to agree to sit down with me and chat. So um, I'm trying to recover because it was so amazing. And I did cry during the concert <laughs> <laughs> because it was so good. Crying is good. <laughs> I, yeah, people cry when they come to my shows. It's the way it is. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't even because I was just yeah. so sad. It was just I was so oh, yeah. moved and touched. I get that. Yeah, I, I cry at happy music all the time. I just like people listening to music and sharing. So how do you feel after after playing a show like this? Good. I've been wanting... Well, it, this show in particular held like sort of a emotional significance to me because I've been wanting to play here for so long. I played here first with Ellis Paul um, eight years ago, and I was like brand new, and he was kind of taking me around the country to all the places um, that he plays. And so there was a lot of... Um, an emotional attachment to those times, and so yeah, I don't know if that makes so sense. So you you opened for him, yes. and now you're headlining here in Seattle. It's almost like you've grown up a little bit since then, right? Yeah, I mean, I like to believe I'm building a career, and it's uh, it, it is exciting to have. I mean, it's just so far from home for me, and yet um, you know. 80 people or so showed, and, and it's it a is a little bit of a miracle. Like, how do people find out about me, and they just show up? So, well, hopefully, this show will help more people. Okay, so uh, one of the things I noticed about the show tonight that I didn't actually realize was going to happen until it unfolded was that uh, there was a spiritual theme, and you played three songs: um, Reason Land, Pearls, and Judas, that all have religious connotations in one way or another. And they tell three totally different stories. Um, can you talk about spirituality in your music and why you think it, it comes out? Why, what is it about that theme for you? Sure. Um, OK, well, maybe I'll just tell you that for me, songwriting is I w it's almost like a form of therapy. I work through things in song. And um, that can be anything. It could be personal things regarding my life, but it could also be bigger issues, and, and oftentimes it's bigger issues. Um, I think I have this sort of need to be like really profound in my songs and get a lot of meaning into them. Yes. Um, and I, I don't know why. I, I think music is just such a beautiful, profound forum that to me it's almost like why waste it on um, fluff. So I, 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 I have a very hardcore... Um, songwriter in that way that I just process depth and issues. And so spirituality, of course, is like the, probably the biggest um, thing you can Why are we here? What's in, in your life? In your art. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's one of the few things that matters somehow. So, yeah. Um, but I don't know the answer to, uh, I don't, I mean, I was raised atheist, and so I don't have a religious background. It's just. Although it's something that you talk about. Yeah, so I, um, I guess I talk about it in a little bit of a complaint way. I just like, I want to connect to that greater whatever it is. Like I think even atheists have a little bit of a sense of, I guess mysticism. I don't know. Searching. Yeah, and so the songs are my connection to that, and so that's why they are heavy and. Uh, I mean, Reason Land is about wanting to believe, which looks nice from the outside. Um, and Pearls is about that, too. And then Judas is just... Judas isn't really a religious song. It, it just it's happens just based to on the Bible story, revolve yeah. around the character Judas. But it's really much more about the, the boy and the um, school shooting scenario. I guess you'd have to hear the song, too. I notice that your songs tell stories. Is that just how it comes out of you instead of just a okay. fluffy song? Or do you feel that you are a storyteller through music? Oh, okay. Well, I don't even think of my songs as story songs, actually. Um, I think of them more as state of mind songs. Because like, a lot of times they don't have so much a beginning and an end. They just are about a topic and they kind of abstractly revolve around that topic. So 
it always surprises me when people say that I tell stories. I, I mean, I tell stories in between songs for sure. I, that's I, uh, verbally, I'll tell stories because um, I, I love when performers sort of share little bits of their lives, and so I do that. But the songs themselves, they don't feel like story songs to me. Um, but I guess some of them are. I don't know if you which, which ones you're thinking of. I mean, well, um, um, one of the last songs you did tonight was Judas. That's definitely a story. Long that's way true. tells a yes. story. Lighthouse Those is two kind of a story. Oh yeah, um, that's you, true. Yeah, I mean Judas is like cinematic sort of. Yes. Um, so I think of it like a little movie, and like I, I write scenes that you're supposed to be able to visualize, and that kind of go together, and then they, um, they paint a picture. But yeah, I guess I think of my songs more as picture songs rather than story songs. Interesting. Um, Ooh, I like that. Because it's not like I'm going from like start to finish. Like to me, a story has like a beginning and an end, and I don't think my songs necessarily have that. But they have little scenes that paint maybe more of an emotional picture. Definitely. Um, they certainly evoke emotion. And you played um, several songs tonight that were covers of other people's songs. Can you talk about why you do that in performance, not just mm -hmm. your own catalog? For fun. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, my, my palette is my palette, and so it is limited by, by its nature. Um, and so to throw in a cover like a Gershwin song or um, something just completely different, um, it's fun for me, and I think it helps the show be a little less, uh, you know, one-sided. So. Well, I came because I wanted to hear you, and I don't care. You, you could sing the alphabet, and I wouldn't care. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what I'll do next time. Okay, <laughs> ABC. You started, though, with a song I had never heard before, and it ripped the guts out of the entire oh, audience. Well, that's a really dark one, yeah. It's, it's amazing. a heavy way to start a show, but I did that. <laughs> yeah, um, I turned to the two people who yeah. came with me, and they said that they were in from, from the get-go. What was the name of that song? Um, that was called Penny Evans, and it's by Steve Goodman, and it's about the Vietnam War, but it still pretty much holds true and resonates. Um, I mean, in truth, the reason I start with that song is just because I want to make like a really um, serious entry. It's just that it's kind of a cappella, and it's a nice way to start a show by not playing the guitar yet, and just start by singing. Well, um, it was, it, it, it just, yeah, I think it was the perfect way to open your show, honestly, because... Yes. It, it brought the audience to an emotional level right away, and we knew that the rest of the night was just going to be touching and emotional, and we were going to feel you. And we did. We did the whole time. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of music I like. Um, Me too. I've always been drawn to the folk scene for that reason, because it's not so much about all the... It's not dance music or anything. It's think music and listen music and feel music. And, I mean, that's what I like. I, I love being taken out of myself by just going to see a show and connecting with the greater, you know, the universe. As you know, this show is called Live Your Passion. Mm -hmm. And so, um, can you offer any advice for anybody who has a passion for music and would like to do that as their job, as mm -hmm. you do? What advice would you give someone who wanted to pursue music as a passion? Um, oh. <laughs> um, well, I think if I could sit down with them and, and talk to them, I would maybe not give just like a one line of advice. I would maybe actually try to paint a picture to them of what it is like to try to get known and try to make your way. Mm -hmm. and, it's more than um, just the creative process. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the creative process is, is um, everyone has their own, so I would never even try to advise someone on that. But presumably, like, um, if I'm talking to some, a young songwriter that has good material and wants to give, a go, give it a go, I would, um, I think I would maybe paint a real picture as in, like, it, it's going to take a while and it's going to be financially trying at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It'll get easier all the time. So that's one of the things about the whole um, building a career grassroots style because it gets better, but it starts out hard. <laughs> so in a way that's good because if you can get through the beginning then it will only get better. Well you know um, um, in that yeah. Malcolm Gladwell book uh, Tipping Point he talks uh, yeah. about the 10,000 hours that it takes 10,000 hours that's to become right. an expert in anything. I remember. Right? Yeah. So um, if you give up too soon you don't know it, that, that's why most people fail. They give up too soon. So mm -hmm. um, that's right. Yeah, you have to have some kind of almost like a 
a flame that's inside of you that is determined enough to want to get there. Otherwise, I think you wouldn't. Like, I guess that's the whole point of passion. There's something in you that drives you. And so the hardship doesn't even phase you because there's also the gratifying part of pursuing your dream that you really can't help. You have to do it. So. Absolutely. You yeah. have to do it. You have, and you do. You absolutely have to do this, right? I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. <I'm laughs> I know what you mean. I, you know, there's, you can go get a job or you can do the thing that you know you're supposed to supposed to do that you're born to do. We had talked about that before your avocado. That's right, we had, yeah. Yeah, and, and so just to refresh the audience, the what's your avocado concept is that everyone has something about them that's special, everyone. And the key is to, well, we call that unique element your avocado. Mm -hmm. So the, the key is to identify that element and act on it. Mm -hmm. at, at what point did you know that you were supposed to do this? How did you know? Well, early on, yeah. Um, I don't, I can't really, I wonder sometimes whether other people have dreams. <laughs> I mean, I know that they do, but my dream was um, pretty uh, monolithic, is that the right word? I don't know, but it was, it was the only thing I wanted to do. Um, and there was really no, there was no question about it. I just had to do it. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think not everyone has that. And, um, I don't know why. I mean, it's, it, has, it mostly has to do with emotional attachment. I, I was so emotionally moved by this music. It helped me through so, so such a hard time in my upbringing. Um, and by this music, I mean the music, uh, the folk scene. The folk scene. You know, like, yes. Again, John Gorka, Liz Paul, um, Dara Williams, Andy DeFranco, all those people. It's like they saved my life, pretty much. Um, and at the time, that music just, well, yeah, it kind of put a protective shield around me in a time that w was hard for me. Um, just like, that's a long story, but fa mm -hmm. family troubles and all that um, um, tough up. Uh, yeah, so uh, it was the only thing that got me through that. And so I knew I needed to give back. It was, it was emotionally salient at a time when nothing else was, I think. Mm -hmm. And this emotional connection to that music then just drove my my own desire to go to that place where I felt alive and understood. And, um, it's a beautiful thing. I guess thing. that's how it happened. <laughs> there was nothing else that would 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 do. Nothing else would do. This is what you're. And it, it's so obvious. It is so obvious that this is what you're supposed to do. It just is. Yeah, I mean, some, something else might have been what I was supposed to do if, if my life path had been different. I don't know. But, uh, I think sometimes we're born with things, though, don't you? I mean, I will. I born. I was born a writer. I knew that. Well, that's nature and nurture, I guess. Like mm. you were shaped by your environment, but you also were born with a certain yeah, write, writing gene or whatever. Right. Yeah. The, so I think it's a combination. But I think your environment also definitely influ influences where where you end up. You know, Certainly. going with your passions. One last question. You talked a bit tonight about moving outside of your comfort zone. What do you feel is your comfort zone, and when do you push outside? Um, well, I've always pushed outside my comfort zone. It's one of the things I'm sort of proud of myself for. Um, I mean, being on stage <laughs> for the longest time, I felt highly uncomfortable with that, because, I, like I said, I'm kind of an introvert, and so... I don't know why I kept going to that place that scared me, but I think that's part of it. Like when something scares you, but you want to be there, um, that's sort of the de definition of feeling alive. I mean, if if you're not a little scared, then that's like you don't care. <laughs> I think that's I think that's um, really true. And so stepping out of my comfort zone is I'm comfortable with that. Iron that's like ironic, but yeah, I'm pretty comfortable with stepping out of my comfort zone because because um, I have realized that the rewards are there. And I guess I'm not afraid of failing, maybe because I just have failed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but you need the 10,000 hours to become an expert, so that's okay. Yeah, yeah I understand that. Um, upcoming CDs, new releases, anything that we need to let people know about? Um, nothing that's available yet. Um, okay. Are you working probably on Probably making a new CD this year. Um, probably be original songs. I'm, I'm still sort of 
figuring out what my next release will be, but it'll it'll happen. I'll probably do. Um, yeah, I, I will. Okay, and we're going to put um, links to your website, antiaduvacat.com, on liveyourpassiontv.com. And we will also um, have links for people to actually buy and download your newest release, which is New Siberia. Yeah. It's fabulous. You have to have it. <laughs> so um, I just want to say to you that I wish you all of the success in the world. Thanks. You too. Thank you. <laughs> you have honestly touched my life. And I oh, want to Oh, that means a lot to me. It's really good to hear. Thanks. Thank you. I want to <laughs> share you with the world. <laughs> Thank you so that. much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> This is Live Your Passion. Adia Duvacat, oh my god. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>